Well, on to life support. Seems important, but really only if something goes wrong. Okay, we are on the launch pad, but we want to take a closer look at the environmental control system. Keeps the cabin pressurized, maintains temperature, and also depressurizes the cabin, right? Because we have to be able to open the hatch to do an EVA, right? I wonder if that's going to be a feature or not. I hope so. Maintains temperature, removes odors and CO2, provides oxygen and water, an Earth-like environment in the capsule. Well, I don't think it actually maintains Earth pressure, right? It's lower than Earth pressure, but good enough. Semi-automatic, but provides manual control when needed, like if it's too hot for us. Okay, two coolant loops will push coolant through the equipment. That, that's a liquid that will absorb or transfer heat, reducing the temperature of components. And radiator evaporator, heat exchangers, heat exchangers, not head exchangers. Oh, I got an interesting picture right there are used to cool the fluid down as it goes through the loop. If the radiator is warm, like after an ascent, it will heat the liquid instead. In that case, the radiator should be bypassed. A radiator bypass switch controls this. Set it to flow. Okay, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. So, flow will flow through the radiator and bypass will bypass the radiator and I assume Bypass is normal for during ascent and while things are trying to cool down. So, and probably bypass is important for re entry as well. There are four pumps that will pump the coolant through the loops. These are usually on until retrograde. The coolant loops and pumps are located in the adapter, and that's why it won't be operating once we retro burn. You can enable the loops by sending the pumps to on. There are two pumps, uh, two loops, primary and secondary. Each loop has two pumps. Okay, hold on a sec. That's primary, that's secondary over there, and each has two pumps. Okay, primary pump A to on. The oxygen used in the capsule is the same as the cryogenic oxygen used in the fuel cells. It is heated before entering the oxygen loops. The primary oxygen tank is in the adapter, and the secondary is in the capsule for re-entry. Suit fans are controlled with that switch, usually set to one or two, uh, one and two for the entire mission. I wonder why you would don't, you would set it to just number one. Maybe if you didn't need so much fanning. The pull levers in the on the front roof panels are used to control some important EC function, uh, ECS functions. CO2 is high. Pull this lever. Oh, it's these levers. Okay, so we pull that one like that to remove CO2. Okay. Snorkel is used to permit air during descent. Oh, because while we're going through the atmosphere, we can just open the vent and get air that way. Okay. Cabin vent is for decompressing the cabin and ventilation during landing. Okay, so when we go step outside, we will decompress like that. Probably we don't do all of these things all at once, but hey, whatever. Water seal seals the cabin for water at splashdown. Huh. So I guess that has little bladders that inflate to really close things up tight? I don't know. Interesting that it wouldn't be water sealed in the first place. O2 high rate recook. Wow. Uh, restores the hydrogen high flow rate to normal oxygen flow. Restores the capability to do another high oxygen flow. High flow is initiated with the O2 high rate switch just below it. So there's this O2 high rate switch and then this resets the high rate. And this has a cover on it. That must, must make it important, because even the computer on switch didn't have a cover on it, but this does. Hmm, interesting. There are many gauges you can use to check ECS. Temp gauge shows the cabin and suit temperatures. Pressure in the cabin, and the CO2 pressure. And then there's the secondary O2 amount. And 
that's in the capsule itself, because uh, we may or may not remember, but uh, the, the cryo, this cryo one, has the information for the fuel cell, the, the stuff in the adapter. So, yep, it was about to tell me that. Make it part of our routine. Well, on the longer trips, we are not going to have too much else to do anyway. Alright, so we've gone over that. Okay, sequencer. Responsible for the phase of the mission. Used together with the checklist, it will guide you through the major stages of the mission. This lesson is preparation for the next lesson where you will do an actual entry. And in this lesson, we'll take a look at the basics of the sequencer and learn about the retrograde and landing stages. Okay, from ascent to landing. It has a main display in the center panel, long stack of light switches. Oh, uh, these, right? Opened and triggered, right? Okay. Illuminating a task you have to perform. If a light illuminates, you can open it and press the trigger to execute the step. Fully manual operation. After stage 2 separation, the sequencer is counting down to the time to retrograde. Time base. At I don't know how to read that. Okay, 256 seconds before retrograde sequence start is T2 minus 256. So T time 2 is the time for the retrograde sequence start. Okay. At this point, the sequencer will illuminate lights you need to follow top to bottom. Okay. First is the in retro attitude. By executing this action, the platform will be tilted for retro attitude. Okay. Battery power is a reminder. Oh, there's the battery power thing. To turn on your batteries as you will separate the fuel cells. So we have to make sure those are on. I'm not sure I have to do these yet because those didn't light up. RCS will disable ohms. This cannot be reverted. And enable the RCS thruster system in the capsule. As with the ohm system, the RCS ring A and ring B, two systems for redundancy and efficiency, those are the ones at the top of the... I wonder if I could show that. Um, uh, camera... Well, you can sort of see it. There's the little RCS ports at the top and there's two rings there. There's two ports stacked on top of each other. Okay, so must have propulsion and power. These are set by RCS control, power, and prop motor valves on the center panel. That's uh, here. RCS prop motor valves and control power. At TR, I have time to retro. I think that T2 was supposed to be TR. TR minus 30. The SEP ohms line and SEP electricity and SEP adapter and arm auto retro are illuminated. So we have to do all of those things immediately. Basically we're cutting off the trunk. SEP ohms line will seal the ohms propulsion line. SEP electricity will cut the adapter and electricity lines and SEP adapter will separate the adapter along with all the equipment. Arm the auto retro system. This need also needs the retro squibs adapt uh, active. Well, that's the batteries. The squibs are over here. Retro rocket squibs. It will then fire the retros. It is normal to trigger the manual retro fi uh, manual fire retro one. Uh, that one. Uh, manual fire retro one second after retro fire, just to be sure. Okay. And then when the retros have fired, we need to jettison the retro section with the last one. And then we'll be in entry configuration. So that's it. That's what those are. Acme. The Acme attitude control is set to rate command. So that's over here. Rate command. And then you'll follow the attitude indicators on the FDAI. Computer is set to re-entry there. 10 minute loading. You are now on your way back to Earth. 
So, yeah, for re-entry, it's a 10-minute loading. But then again, from our normal altitudes, we should take at least 10 minutes to actually hit the atmosphere. After entry, the landing system is used to deploy a drogue at 40,000 feet, I assume, and the main chute at 10,600 feet. The altimeter can be used to check this, and lights will illuminate on the left panel when you need to do this. Oh wait, I need to do this? Mm, I don't see any parachute manual trigger here, so... No, oh, there's, there's the high altitude drogue and parachute. Okay, well, we can do that then. Keep in mind that chute deployment is manual. Well, that's great. So we have to make sure to deploy the chutes at the right time or we die. At 200 feet, the landing attitude is pressed to tilt the capsule before splashdown. Because originally they were going to paraglide, so it's actually um, has to be tilted horizontal and then they have horizontal floats on it too so landing attitude that's over here and then the final one is the parachute jettison oh that happens automatically good and then we will be down all right that's the theoretical part of it I think I'm gonna... Okay, that's a sequencer. All right, yeah. I'll be saving the full mission for another video. I will do this deorbit entry and landing, though. Hector! Hector is going to be my astronaut instructor. Okay, deorbit entry landing procedures. Yes, I know what re-entry is. Yes, I know about heating. I've, I've had it happen. Will uh, jettison retrograde? Yeah. Tip nose of the Gemini capsule contains a parachute system. Yep. 80 minutes from start of re-entry. Center pedestal. Okay, we're going to set ohms to open. And we're activating ohms. Okay, platform, butt first. Yep, we're changing to retrograde. Set computer to re-entry. And wait for 10 minutes for the OBC memory to erase and load the re-entry program. Interesting, I've gotten accustomed to jettisoning my service module in a uh, much got um, radial instead of straight retrograde but they're gonna have us do a straight retrograde okay 10 minutes have passed press computer start oh, let me go over to the commander seat all right and it's green and thank goodness otherwise you'd have to wait for another 10 minutes okay we need to check how much time we have left so press one Nine, so 19 is our how much time do we have left thing. Let's remember. 3981. Well, that's like more than an hour. Time for retro burn in seconds. Yep, it's definitely changing in accordance to how many seconds. Now we will configure the event timer counting down for 10 o'clock. Or 10 minutes. DN mode. Commander panel. Then turn the event timer. That one. Counterclockwise to increase numbers until getting to 10 minutes. Uh, okay, alright. Alright. We've got it to 10 minutes. Dow, turn the dial clockwise back to middle. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Stop. Okay, we're on stop. And we're 
we're turning that to down. Oh, there's count up, count down, maybe? Read out? Yep. Until it displays 600 seconds, then we need to... Then we need to start that countdown, right? Right? Right. Roger. Yeah, I don't want to wait, like, the better part of an hour, so I will be time warping. Let's see. Alright. I can check the this during time warp, so that's good. Uh, okay, can I reach that standby thing while still refreshing this? Not really. This takes more than one person, darn it. One, zero, nine... Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can I take a look at both of them? Two. Yeah. We're good. Mission pad checklist. Five minutes to retro. Don't click run yet. All right. And then there's another checklist for 30 seconds to retro. All right, run. Okay, squib power up retro. Oh yeah. Push. Main battery. Up, 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 up. Fuel cell power. Uh, oh yeah, that was all on that panel. All right, pilot seat. All right, off. And off, 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 off. Okay, here goes the RCS. Um, RCS push, you say. Oh, yeah, that. RCS push. Separate Ohm's line push. Electricity push and... Separating adapter. Ouch. Pushed. Okay. Fuse retro up. Fuse retro manual up. Oh, it's all gone. No. I needed more things to flick. Please. I really think I should turn on the RCS. 30 seconds to retro. It doesn't tell me to arm the RCS, but that's the only re way we would control our attitude now that the adapter's gone. Oh, you got three minutes for me to ponder this. I mean, it's holding it. Well, I'm just gonna trust the checklists. Now we can close these now, right? Getting ready to run the checklist, which can consist of very few actual items. I just need to flick, 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 and then arm retro. And then once that all happens, we will jettison retro. Well, we will manually fire the retro one second after they're supposed to fire. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and press that. But yeah, I still say we should probably turn on the RCS at some point. Okay, well it sounds like well, we're waiting for the jettison retro sequencer to light up. Pretty clear that we have retroed. But I guess we have to wait till it's safe. They might have some residual puffs of thrust. You never know. There we go. And it's off. Post jet uh, retro jettison checklist. All right. Squib retro power down. Squib landing up. 
Oh, now we activate the RCS. Interesting. See? It's never what you think. There we go. Okay, start re-entry. Well, it's all on its own now. You can see it's turning. Now, of course, I can take manual control during re-entry. We sometimes did that. Set FDAI reading to calm. In range, Corpus Christi has me in range, White Sands has me in range, Eglin, Canaveral, everybody has had me in range, but I've been ignoring them completely. And then set that to act. Hmm, well that's a little bit off. Re-entry, and turned on, bright green light. Yeah, I believe so. Set attitude control to re-entry. I think that's right. Okay. Ah, platform free. Well, it's still not doing anything. Okay. Yep, I can see the FDA eyeball very clearly, yes. Now my pilot skills will be proven. Uh-oh. Change the Gemini spacecraft attitude manually so the needles point to the center. Ah, uh, this is SAS mode where it stops automatically, so that's good. Well, that looks pretty centered to me. Let's zoom in a little bit more on the yaw. Okay. Further instructions? No, I, that's fine. I got it. Keep those needles centered as much as you can. You may use time skipping if you wish. Notice that time skipping is not available when entry interface is starting. That's probably for the best. Alright, well, we have to wait until actual re-entry occurs. So, time skipping it is. There's a little bit of yaw drift. Oh, there's a little bit of drift altogether. Alright, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll fix that. Can't be having them say that I don't have piloting skills. Uh, attitude check. Altitude check, I mean. 327 kilometers. Well, we've got a long way to go before we hit atmosphere. Three thirty three, we're going up. That's it. Deny. No, I guess I can't do that. Okay, we're gonna that's the parachute thing. Three sixty five. I don't know. Have we already skipped off of the atmosphere or something? Well, what's our orbit info? 800, uh, 388 by 313.8. Well, that doesn't seem right either. If we've already retroed, our periapsis should be low, right? This is all bad. I don't know what to make of this. What do we look at on the outside? Oh, it's too dark. Well, we're just a pod, that's for sure. So we've definitely jettisoned the retros. I mean, it's weird. That doesn't make any sense, because we've spent an hour getting to Apoapsis. I, I don't see how that's possible. Maybe I did the retro wrong. Because we're still in orbit. Yeah, we've already... We're one hour and twelve minutes past retro. By that time, we should have hit the atmosphere. Uh, we sure seem high over the Earth. Still 314. 350! No! We're never coming down! 
Okay, well, I mean, we should be able to use the RCS to reduce our orbit, but I don't know if it does that. Um, so we have a problem here. I don't know what I did wrong. Perhaps you do. Uh, that'll be a mystery for the audience to figure out. But yeah, we're doomed. I've done it wrong. So, yeah, well, on that note, I think I'll leave it here. Next time we'll try the full mission. Maybe that'll work better, or maybe I'll be stuck in space again. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.